Hey guys, so what have I been doing MTG finance wise? I've been buying old collections. Now these old collections, they don't have the rares or if they have rares, they're very bad. But the tide has turned. Now these bad rares and these uncommons are quite valuable. Uh, so where would you go bu about buying old collections? Flea markets, Craigslist. I mean, Craigslist is very uh, creepy and the cancellation is quite high, but it is generally an okay place. What am I looking at? I'm looking at older cards from Legends, Antiquities, Unlimited is even good, Al obviously Alpha Beta, those are the huge gems. Even if a collection has, let's say, 20 black bordered Alpha Beta cards, still very good. That's still not a bad collection. That's still a collection that long term will hold its price. I am not interested in buying any new magic cards because they have literally no value in my opinion. But these older stuff, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be on the reserve list. I'll give you one example of a card that I love. Uh, Peregrine Falcon, I believe it is blue from Legends. It's been reprinted a few times. One in a blue for a 1-1 one, one flyer where attacking does not cause it to untap. Well, I look at like Stone Devil and all these other cards, and yes, they haven't been reprinted, but it's a one mana for one one first strike, and it's like $15. And I say, hmm, this Falcon could be valuable one day. Not today, but maybe tomorrow. And that's the key here is people have these older collections, and these older collections are valuable. If you can buy them from bulk or bulk is prices, then I would snap a buy. The new cards, especially modern cards, I have really little, little interest in modern cards because they're just going to get reprinted into Oblivion. We all kind of saw what happened to Horizon Canopy, Aether Vial. I, I mean, it's uh, very little hope. Very little hope on the MTG Finance side. But these things keep going up and up and up, and I have like a bazillion of them. If you get an old collection and the person open any packs of the set, you will have the Urza Towers, the other ones. You're, you're just going to have them because it's, you naturally accumulate them. So my best advice is do not buy from anyone who knows their prices too well, like MTG Finance. They're going to pick through this mess and they're going to give you junk. Buy a collection that's just been there. And you can tell because it, it takes about two seconds to tell. Because you should be, if they didn't remove it, you should have these cards in the collection. And for $28, how many strip mines at, I believe this is an uncommon, at uncommon do you really need to see for you to get your $100 back? The answer is not many. How many alpha beta cards do you need to see? If you see one Dark Ritual, you see one Shivion Dragon, buy it, snap buy. And these collections are out there. They're not gonna be out there forever, it used to be Power 9 could have been purchased on Craigslist and eBay and rel relatively cheaply, but now everyone knows what Power 9 is. And it used to be these pseudo good rares then became expensive, and then next was the reserve list cards, and now it's just random cards that are old. I would definitely, oh, if you have these old cards, I definitely wouldn't sell them unless you had to. I would sell my modern collection before I sell this old stuff. This old stuff is going to keep value just because when you compare the print runs, it's all about the supply. There's not enough supply of it, even if the demand is not very high. It's fine. So if a person played during Arabian Nights and they haven't played Magic since, let's call it mm, Born of the Gods, Concha Tarkir, no way they would read this card and say this is a $140 card you'd find stacks of this card in bulk. But guess what? That stack of 10 was $1,400. I mean, is anyone going to give you that price? I don't know. Probably not. But I mean, would if I traded this for $70, I know someone in my store would take it for 70 because they would, everyone would take it for 50% of quote value. And I don't believe it's going to go down that much. Maybe they go down a tiny bit. Maybe they go down not that much. But at the end of the day, this old, these old cards are where I want to put my money in. 
and that's what I have been doing. I love old cards. Now, there's two types of old cards. I'm showing you one today, which is the old, old ones, and then the second one is Mirage, our reserve list cards, which would theoretically include Urza's Destiny, Urza's Legacy, and Urza's Saga, but I would only include a reserve list card for those. But for Mirage, there's a ton of stuff, just random bulky stuff on the reserve list. It's not as old as, let's say, a Nova Pentacle. Again, if you played during the Legends and you didn't come back like today, you are under an impression that Nova Pentacle is at most a $5 card. Or if you read it, you would say, hmm, there are so many better cards today, this card sucks, okay. You wouldn't conclude it's a $16 card based on what it does. And if you didn't know it's a rare, which many people don't know, no way you get to $16 today. There's no way that you can conclude this card. You would have to check up all the cards in Legends, and that's not how people sell bulk. I am fortunate that I have a lot of Magic the Gathering old bulk, and I've been collecting this game for a long time. I know many of you don't think I love this game. I do. And your collection is not an indication of how much you love the game, because obviously, like, stores have, you know, well, I guess stores have to love the game because they supply it. But I love certain aspects of the game, and there's no aspect I like more than having old cards. That's where the money will be in the future. I'm almost certain of it that these old cards, like, again, if you play during let's say um, Antiquities, and then you got back during RTR, or Battle for Zendikar, and then you quit. The chance of you understanding this is a $100 card is zero. It is absolutely zero. The people who own these cards are, have them in bulk. And that's where their value is. So if you're talking about MTG Finance, it never goes away, right? It used to be Modern was a hot deal, right, with the $100 fetch lands that we artificially spiked. Thank you, channel, uh, Star City Games. Thank you for that. But then they reprinted everything in Oblivion, and then Modern is no longer a hot MTG Finance commodity. And then next would be, you know, reserve list cards. But, I mean, people already know that. People already know that. It's going to be way more competitive. The last remaining one is bulk. Old bulk. That's still on sale. It's still on flea markets. It's still everywhere. And that's why I would, you know, that's why I would put money into. Like I'm not I'm not into anything else right now. I'm into buying large bulk collections and just storing them. Because you never know. Like for instance, I have a bazillion pirates from Mirage. Like that one pirate dude who's like five bucks now. He's terrible, and I would never imagine him more than five cents, but hey, it's five bucks now. There's no better feeling than when you have a hundred of them and you're like, oh, makes you look smart, right? <laughs> when in fact it's luck. Most of MTG finance is luck and don't let anyone else tell you any different. I have certain preferences for cards like Falia, Malera. I like them. I really do. But I've also had many misses. My most memorable miss was the... What was that green enchantment for one green? It was like mana or something, and it had to bounce back to your hand to do anything relevant. Oh, it was X in a green, and I thought it would be amazing for enchantments because it cost one green, and we were going to an enchantment set block, but unfortunately, the enchantment block was very bad for enchantments and other cards, and it was just mono black, so that one did not go so well. So sometimes you get lucky, and sometimes you don't. Uh, most people don't talk about their misses, but I do. And I will openly say that um, a lot of the cards, the way I bumped into this bulk is if you are a magic collector and you love magic, this stuff doesn't move. This does not move. Old bulk without the, um, especially if it doesn't have black, silver, orange, and gold, most vendors don't want to take it. They're not going to take bulk rares from Legends I, when I was younger. This was like five years ago. They're not going to do it because it's too complicated for them. They would rather have, okay, here's the gold symbol. Okay, we'll give you the bulk price for this gold. So even if I wanted to sell them my older bulk rares, 
without the gold symbol, they wouldn't take them. They had two different prices for them. But now those older bulk rares, my gosh. My gosh. Honeypot. Anyway, bye guys.